Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the shop. So what I got working on today uh, is a bench top power supply, uh, one that's a little more decked out than uh, some of the ones you can get commercially, uh, as well as kind of some of the cheaper ones that I've seen people build before. Um, so it's going to be going around just a PC power supply. Uh, this one is a 400 watt uh, PC power supply. So the great part about these PC power supplies um, is that they give you all your common voltages. So they give you 3.3 volt, 5 volt, 12 volt, um, and even 7.5 volt, which is kind of an oddball. And there's even a way to get 24 volt DC um, all out of one power supply without any type of regulation circuit or anything like that. Um, so what I did with mine, I found this uh, enclosure design on Thingiverse. I printed it out on my 3D printer. So it's got uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, eight pieces that go with it. So it kind of wraps it up into a protective housing. Um, and it gives you several of these face plates um, that you can either take some of the, the ones that they have pre-made, or if you uh, are familiar with modifying like 3D printed files, you can make your own face plate like I made this one here. Um, and here's what it looks like with it finished. Um, so I got my 12 volt section here, my 5 volt here, my 3.5 volt or 3.3 volt here, and then I have voltage and amperage meters uh, for each of these sections. So this is one I got pre-assembled. Um, I'm going to take you through how to get this thing wired. Um, I got some diagrams here to show you kind of what's what with power supplies. Um, so stay tuned. We'll get it set up for you. Okay, so first things first, how do you know uh, what the power is coming out of here without having a multimeter? Um, so you're going to have some leads that come out like this. This particular one has SATA uh, as well as ATA power supply. And it's even got a little four pin uh, for your three and a half uh, floppy drives that they haven't used in a while. And then you have a 20 or a 24 pin connector coming out of this big cluster of wires. Mine I've already got cut off. But what I've done is printed out the pin out uh, for standard 20 and 24 pin uh, power supply. So this will show you all your different voltages and the color of wire that go with it. Um, so one thing to note, your grounds, all of your grounds are on a common rail. Um, so if you check them with a meter um, in a diode or ohm check, um, all your grounds will be connected together. Same thing with your 3.3 volt, your 5 volt, and your 12 volt. Um, all of them are going to be based on the same rail, um, even the negative 12, 12 volt, which is where you pick up the other side of your, your 24 volts. Um, so we know that obviously ground is black, 3.3 volt is orange, 5 volts is all of our reds, and 12 volts are our yellows. Um, and so on this pin out on the 20 pin, you only have one 12 volt. Um, so if you needed more, you can just take one of your... Uh, hard drive connectors like these, cut the wires off, and that gives you a 12 volt, your ground, and your 5 volt. And then you can pull your 3.3 volt out of the, uh, the big connector here. Um, so let me get this over to the soldering iron and we'll get, uh, I'll show you how to wire everything up to the front panel. We'll get everything soldered and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so what I've done, I've cut off my 24 pin connector. Um, and I went through and separated all my wires and electrical tape them together um, so that I got everything separated. So there's a, a couple of important wires and a couple of wires that we're not going to worry about. Um, so for mine on the 24 pin, um, and even the, the color codes are the same on the 20 pin, um, there's only a few wires that I'm concerned about. So uh, the orange, which is our 3.3 volt, the black, which is our ground, um, the yellow, which is our 12 volt, the red, which is our 5 volt, uh, the green wire, which is our power supply on signal, um, that needs to be terminated to ground. Um, and those are pretty much the only wires we're worried about. Uh, there's a few other ones through here, um, like this blue one, which is negative 12, which is what you'd use to get 24 volt, but I'm not going to use that on my power supply. Uh, the PG, um, this is a, I think it's a power supply good, it's a feedback signal. Um, that would typically come from the motherboard um, to say that the 3.3, the 5 volt, and the 12 volt rail are all within tolerance. Um, I'm not going to worry about that on my power supply. 
but I guess if you wanted a little more sophisticated setup, you could get into that. Um, and then our 5 volt VSB. Um, I forget what this is. This is 5 volt when the power supply is not active. Um, so when this power supply is in a computer and you push the power button on the front, what it's doing is, is it's shorting uh, pin 16 or the green wire, the power supply on signal to ground. Um, and, it, and it continually shorts those and that puts the power supply into operational mode and then it activates all the rails. Um, when it's not activated or turned off or in standby mode, um, this is putting out 5 volts to the real time clock um, and other stuff that needs to run on the motherboard um, or even if it's in like sleep mode, um, kind of low power state, it would be using this 5 volt to keep all the memory um, active on the motherboard so that when it comes out of that sleep mode, it'll power back up. So uh, we're not going to use that on this one. So I broke out my red, yellow, orange, black, um, and my green wire. I took all the rest of these other wires and taped them up, um, put them out of the way. So now I'm going to take these and solder these into my display panel. So with these little uh, volt amp meters, there's two different ways that you can wire them. Uh, there's the direct power, which I think is the preferred route for most people, uh, because it will take in 4 to 20 volt and it, it basically pulls it from your supply voltage. So whatever uh, output voltage you want this to display, this will run off of uh, without needing you know two different voltages. Um, so for mine in particular, uh, I this will work fine for the 5 volt, 12 volt but it will not work for my 3.3 volt output because the minimum voltage um, to power the meter is four volts. And it may work, but I don't want any type of voltage discrepancy to throw off the, uh, the accuracy of this meter. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna power both of these, or I'm gonna go with the independent supply and power all three meters off of five volt common. Um, and then I'm gonna break out my 12 volt, five volt, and three volt um, to the output pins. Um, so I'll show you kind of how that's wired into my setup um, when we get to soldering in and everything. So let me get my setup, my soldering iron set up and we'll get this soldered up. Okay, so got all the soldering done. Um, so what I did, the best way I found to do this um, I have two posts for each voltage output, so the 12 volt, 5 volt, 3.3 volt. Um, I have two positive, two negative uh, for each each voltage set. Um, so I took a piece of, uh, I think it's a 16 gauge wire, um, stranded copper wire, twisted it together, and then ran it across the posts um, for the positive and negative on each one. And then um, for like the 3.3 uh, volt positive, these orange wires, I just bundled them all together to make sure I get my uh, amperage carrying or amperage capability um, to my posts and just soldered it to the bridge wire. Uh, so I did the same thing on the 5 volt here and then on the 12 volt here. Uh, so on the 12 volt, the yellow wires up here, I only had two wires coming out of my 24 pin connector, um, but I did have this little uh, 8 pin connector that I think goes to a GPU, um, a video card. And so this would be the independent supply for the video card. And I clipped uh, the four yellow wires off of this harness, which is my 12 volt. And I joined them to here uh, because I was concerned that with the two wires here, I wouldn't be able to get more than maybe an amp or two out of this uh, pretty thin 20 gauge wire. Um, so doubling the wires up allows me to get a higher amperage um, out to my outputs here. So let me get all this shoehorned in here. Oh, one more thing I did. Um, so I put the switch here. It's just a, uh, a uh, normally open switch uh, with a lat latching switch. Um, so I put a ground wire on one side of the switch and then my green or my power on lead to the other side of the switch um, so that when I turn the power on, now I can turn it off and turn it on. Um, as you can see, I got 12.3 volts on my 12 volt, 5.1 and 3.3. Um, and once I get those bolts, you know, put into the case and all tightened up, 
Um, I have a little 10 amp load tester um, I'm going to get hooked up to this and we're going to see what kind of amperage we can pull out of these outputs. So let me get all this put together and I'll be right back. Alright, got everything shoehorned in there. Um, so this is what the final, final thing looks like. Um, I did cut a hole in the front and I left uh, a string of these Molex connectors uh, on one of the connect on one of the strings. Um, so that's my IDE plug. There's a SATA plug and then a little four pin. Um, so if I did want to power like an external, uh, like a 3.5 hard drive or CD-ROM drive off of this power supply, I still have the Molex connectors. Um, and then when I'm not using them, I just kind of tuck them away. Like that. So what I got here, this is my dummy load power supply. Uh, you know, from China, not super accurate, but uh, it does draw quite a bit of amperage. Uh, so it gives us an idea of what this thing can power. Um, so my power supply is powered off of this. It's coming off the 12 volt uh, output, um, just because you can't power this with any less than 12 volts. Um, so I got the negative and positive going into here, and then on the 12 volt output from here goes to the load side of the power supply. Turn this on, and we'll set this to Twelve volts will go about three amps. Um, so I got the, the load set to twelve volt three amps. Now this is not super accurate. Um, it's off by quite a bit. Um, so I wouldn't trust this, but I do trust uh, these little gauges here. Um, these are relatively accurate, um, and I forget. I'll have to look at the spec sheet on them. Uh, but they're you know within probably five or six percent of your total load. Um, they're not bang nuts on accurate because they're, uh, you know, four or five bucks piece, but they're close enough to, uh, for anything that I do here in the shop. Um, so I got this set to 12 volt and three amps. Uh, it's tied to the 12 volt output here. So we'll run the load and we'll see. You can see we're pulling 4.1 amps at 11.9 volts. And I got my multimeter here. So we'll just check and see what the output is. Eleven point nine volts here, or eleven point eight five. So there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of discrepancy in the voltage and amperage. Um, like I said, I trust this amperage more than I would this, uh, but this is also dependent on the input voltage. Um, so I haven't powered it off of uh, like a 24 volt power supply, which would give me full amperage. But let's stop the test, and then we'll turn this all the way up. So the most it's going to let me do is uh, 4.9 amps. So we'll run it. You can see we got 6.3 amps coming out here. Um, so that's, you know, pretty good for uh, probably being $30, $35 power supply, kind of home built, just something you do in your spare time. Um, and then, of course, you got the, the 5 volts here and then 3.3 volts here. And then each of these have their own uh, amperage readouts that are separate from here. Um, so not a bad little project. I think I may build me another one just to have a pair of these. And if you happen to have a 3D printer, um, and a PC power supply, you know, it's it's a well worth project. Um, so I'll put all the I'll put the link to this case that was 3D printed down below, and then I'll put the Amazon links to uh, where you can get all these materials to make one of these. Um, if you like this video, please uh, hit the the thumbs up below, comment below if you have any questions on this or you want to see anything different. Um, other than that, we'll see you next time.